Megan Olivia here with Tony Ferguson, who just defeated Aaron Riley here at UFC 135. And last time I talked to you, you said you like to dress up before and after your fights. Right. Fresh to death, as always. <laughs> Do you think this is something you can help me implement with the rest of the fighters? Because you guys look very professional when you dress up like this. Uh, you know, that's the biggest thing is I am a professional. You know, I'm not just an amateur in this art, you know. And that's what I want to make sure that everybody knows is that we are professional. You don't have to dress up like me. You don't have to dress up like anybody else, you know. Do your own thing. Be yourself. But this is me. This is how I like it. You know? I like it. It works. It's clean. I like it, you know. And the one thing is I'm always proud of wearing my sponsor's clothes. But at the same time, I represent myself well and I represent my sponsors well and they know who I come from let's talk about that fight did you know when you landed that uppercut that you were going to break his jaw like could you feel anything special behind that punch no my coach told me he's like just don't aim here aim behind his head and so the one thing was I did and as soon as I slipped that jab I went up for that uppercut and I was hoping to throw another punch right after that but it wasn't landing my, my right hand wasn't coming across so I knew that my initial punches were to either break his nose or break his jaw and he broke his jaw all right, and you're getting blown up right now. Congratulations, I'm sure. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's all right. But, you know, you hit him with a lot of punches. You hit him so hard many times, but he kept coming. Were you impressed by that performance by him? Well, of course, you know. I knew he was going to be able to come after me. I saw a lot of his film, uh, especially with Ross Pearson when he fought him. And, you know, they just, they just stand it up and battled, you know. I, I knew that, you know, I was hoping for, like, fight a night or something like that. I was hoping maybe go all three rounds so that way, you know, the crowd could see me and be able to, you know, this is what they pay for. This is what you guys want, you know, is to be able to do that. You know, I felt kind of bad, you know, that the doctor stopped us pretty short. But at the same time, you broke your jaw, you can't really fight. Yeah, now you train at Team Death Clutch, which was a change you made after the Ultimate Fighter. How has that changed your life as a fighter? Uh, it's added to it greatly. Uh, you know, being able to go back to the Midwest and then be able to train on the West Coast is just a huge honor. Uh, Death Clutch is awesome. I train over at the Academy of Mixed Martial Arts. Uh, Greg Nelson also. Uh, you know, uh, Nick Lenz, Paul Bradley, uh, Jake Volkman. Those guys over there are just awesome guys. Sean Shirk over there at their gym is just their gym is awesome. So being able to come off of like my home area and be able to go over there completely out of the ordinary and just get my butt kicked every day and then go back and be able to calibrate it, it's the best thing in the world. You made that decision because of your time on The Ultimate Fighter. Were you able to watch the first episode of this season? I was able. There was a, you know, I would have paid for pay-per-view for that one. That was, there was a lot of fights on there. Actually, my teammate Jesse Newell, uh, unfortunately, he got knocked out. But at the same time, uh, you know, it was awesome. This season's going to be awesome, and I'm definitely a fan of The Ultimate Fighter. All right, well, congratulations. Go call that person back. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks so much. Keep checking Heavy.com for more UFC 135 coverage.